Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and well, I welcome all of you back to another Chris Chan quickie reading and possibly on to the very first instance of what I think we're dubbing the lost media section of Christory. I say lost because there was no um, given way to suggest that this would ever make the surface, but the, here we are. And what is it we're talking about exactly? The Manchester High School leaks. Now, a little bit of context. In June 2014, Quickie Forms user Skyraider91, also known as Cousin Al, who went on Chris's date with uh, Catherine uh, later that year, began leaking scans of several documents from Chris's junior year from 1998 to 1999 of high school. Many of the pages appear to be charred and or water damaged likely as a result of the January 2014 house fire, and subsequent events at 14 Branch Lane Court. It was revealed in November 2014 that these had been obtained by trolls stifling through the trash at the burnt-out house, which, although not illegal, still lends credence to the view that the trolling of Chris is going too far. I mean, yes, I would definitely say so. It is very apparent from these leaks that many of Chris's teachers gave him very high grades, which he indisputably did not deserve. Whether they did this out of misguided pity, a fear of being given a scene to play kick the autistic, or simply being incompetent themselves, given Chris, who had perfectly adequate mental uh, faculties for the work, undeserved extra credit would have been contrib contributed to his ego and general laziness. I'm going to actually put a very hard pause on this right here because um, for those who are at all curious, when I was doing my GCSEs and A-levels, they did offer me extra time as well. Not extra credit because it's not necessarily the same thing. But here's the thing. I was very, very adamant in telling them, no, I would rather do my exams in the big hall like everybody else. And by the way... um. Whether you want to say this is a difference in the education systems or differences in both countries and the difference of nearly 16 years apart. But no, you know what? You only ever got extra credit when you actually did something that warranted praise or dignitas. Which, well, when we get to exactly what Chris is... I mean, I would say the only way to do this is to compare like notes in terms of school stuff and stuff like that. But the only actual real piece of uh, my education that I still have hold on to since I was 18 were my English literature uh, exercise books when I was doing my, my, my A-levels. And I'm pretty sure a lot of them are in the loft and I don't really have the time to go and fish them out. I mean, I probably could, but it's, it's ju I'm just saying what it is. Again, this comes down to... Uh, just whatever. Even within this small core sample of his work, it's apparent that Chris frequently left out sections he didn't want to complete, wrote essays in a first-person subjective tone, and even wrote parts of his work in the wrong language, and still got good or even perfect scores. The only uh, thing I could even possibly suggest to that is maybe Chris marked them himself. The teachers who enabled this abysmal workmanship probably had the best intentions and or incompetence. But even though they may have made Chris, Bob and Bob very happy, they certainly did not Chris any favours in the long run. Thankfully, at least a few of his markers had the sense to treat his work like they treat anyone else's, and he has them to thank for only being able to get into the local community college. So... Here is pe parenting. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Presumably, Chris interviewed Bob and or Bob for this assignment, and most of the answers are short and vague to the point of not making much sense. It's unclear whether Bob or Bob uh, were giving apathetic answers, or whether Chris was just too lazy to recall their full responses. Humorously, the interviewee says that the hardest part of being a parent has been dealing with public school sizes, and that they choose to have children simply because it's nice to have kids. That's like really that that 
that, that, that does not even come close to cutting the mustard. They also make mention of laughter from four kids and three situations. The idiosyncratic expression has been interpreted as referring to the social stigma that Bob and Bob endured as a result of their respective previous relationships and children. It is likely to be just an obscure, antiquated, idiomatic formation, not to be taken literally, referring to the various wacky happenings stemmed from raising one single very special boy. And, well, since we're on the subject, um, here we go. Fifth, okay, Christian Western Chandler, 50 points, and he got a perfect score. Uh, due date, 19th of February, 1999. Why did you choose to have kids? It's nice to have kids. Right. How did you decide how many children to have? I thought it would be nice to have... Uh, what is that meant to be one more? That's that's the, maybe the other problem with this is that I can't decipher... Well, I can decipher most of the la of the language. Uh, let me see if I can actually... It would be nice to have one... I'm going to say that's at least one more. Just, just to be fair, I guess. Did free question free? Did you know the basic facts about pregnancy and childbirth before you experienced them? Where did you get these facts? From. Booth from both. Where did you get most of your information on child uh, rearing? Uh, learn it from parents, uh, integrated and figured it out in the trial and trial and error. I'm not entirely sure if uh, uh, Bob's uh, other kids uh, would have been would have liked the idea of being referred to as trial and ever. Hmm. Did anyone else play a larger role in parenting your younger children, i.e., daycare, sitter, grandmother, uh, uh, daycare, uh, day, uh, babysitter, and daycare, and other methods? Well, mostly homeschooling, and we know how well that turned out, didn't we? I mean. Yeah, exactly. Okay. How do you think your attitude toward parenting differs from your parents' attitudes? Why? To mom, a combination. Dad, uh, ooh, sorry. Uh, dad uh, didn't uh, see too much of, but managed uh, with child all the time, with children all the time, and it told me into lemonade uh, and available. Oh yeah, that's right. Didn't like Bob's dad. No, it was uh, it was Bob Barbara's uh, parents. Like, didn't Barbara like have come from a family of like eight kids, something like that? Um, and question eight: How do you think your children's attitude will uh, differ from yours? Uh, much smarter than pa parents. Um, what has been uh, most rewarding your greatest joy in being a parent? Uh, love and the uh, the spontaneous love and affection of a child. Well, now we know definitely Barbara was the one behind this. And finally, what has been the hardest part of being a parent? Dealing with uh, the uh, public school system. I, I should have known. Uh, what advice would you give a young couple who is thinking about starting a family? Uh, big commitment and lots of responsibility. If that's, well, probably ironic again. So yes, again, this has to have come from Bob. When do you think a couple is ready for parenthood? Each couple has to decide themselves. Outstanding. And look at that. I was probably right. Uh, Barbara was the one behind this. Well, it says both of them, but I still would like to imagine at least Barbara probably took part in most of this, strangely enough. Oh, okay, we have an actual transcript, uh, transaction, okay. Yes, from book. Okay, so uh, that's that. Uh, describing development. A worksheet in which Chris was asked to identify one of five characteristics of developmental exemplified by various situations. Chris only managed to identify half the characteristics correctly, earning him an F. I just want to see this first before we do this. Uh, uh, where, yeah, exactly. He only he find an intellect. Yeah, exactly. He only just bothered doing half of this. Like, Chris, you do realize that again. That doesn't that doesn't cut the mustard, and 
some of these even look really underdeveloped and of course we're just going to be doing the actual transcript because i think it's going to be easier to read that way okay top of page mark five and the number of incorrect questions and graded 10 out of 20 in red pen with a circled three in magenta ink maybe perhaps three would maybe maybe 10 was about as generous as they were willing to give him describing development directions identify the characteristic of development described in each situation Remember that the characteristics of development are as follows. Development is similar for everyone. Development builds on earlier learning. Development proceeds at an individual rate. The different areas of development are interrated. And development is continuous throughout life. Jessica is an active three-year-old who enjoys dressing herself. Lately, she has started choosing her clothes each morning. Her parents are amazed at her constant eagerness to learn new things it seems she never stops wanting to learn. Characteristic of development. Development is continuous throughout life. Um, I wouldn't necessarily... I'm not entirely sure whether I can uh, honestly say whether or not uh, you could actually enjoy getting dressed. I mean, dressing is like a necessity, really. So... I think no that yeah exactly I'm 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 thinking in the back of my mind no that that doesn't work that that, that, that I I don't know if I've missed something in that but no, no that it it doesn't work like that uh two Michael always had trouble in school he did poorly on tests and was seldom able to answer when the teacher called on him some of the other children teased Michael on the playground and called him dummy as a result Michael was very shy and had uh, little self-confidence. Since he has started wearing glasses, however, he has been doing better in school. Now Mark Michael feels good about himself and has been able to tip make friends more easily. Characteristic of development. Development builds uh, it on earlier learning. Corrected in red pen, interrate, in, interrated. Um, again, I'm... That 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 would probably even have a, that's earlier learning. No, that's 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 more. Um, that's that that's that's probably no. That's just down to the fact that Michael just probably needed glasses. That's not like develop. That's no. That's. Am I missing something at all? This, but no. The, this this comes the first one. It it come, it reads as though, uh, they try to exemplify whether or not. Uh, uh, development, like just learning to dress yourself, is 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 just a, it is is a development. I mean, it's progress, yes, but in the grand scheme of things, it's something that we all have to do anyway. It's not as it's not the same as like getting dressed and then we learn to do something at the very same time. It's not an evolutionary sort of thing. So, we developing is just not because there's. You can't really... Go, what else are you expected to put on at that point? Like, you, you're trying to get what I'm saying. Who wrote any of... Who wrote this? And what was... What was the point of this class? And the second question was down to the fact that Michael just needed some glasses. That's... That's down on his parents for not, you know, asking whether or not he knew what he was doing. And he probably needed his eyes tested. Okay. Uh, Joshua and Nicole are cousins uh, born two months apart. Although Joshua is older, Nicole began to sit and stand about the same time Joshua did. This has been slightly puzzling to Joshua's parents. I don't really understand what this question is. They are worried about Joshua's uh, apparently slow rate of development. Characteristic of development. Uh, development proceeds at an individual rate. Developing, of, de developing what exactly? Sitting and standing? What? That's okay. I'm moving on from that. I don't. If I. I don't. I. I don't know if it. I. I don't know if it's because I have no clue what they're trying to ask with these questions, but. Actually, no. I'm just gonna leave it as that. I don't. I have no idea what they're trying to ask in these questions. Jim is babysitting his neighbor's son, Albert. To Jim, it seems as if it was only yesterday that Albert was crawling on the carpet in the living room. 
He remembers that Albert then learned to walk and is now running and jumping in the yard. Characteristic of development, different areas of development are interlated. Okay, maybe I could give uh, kudos to maybe that idea. I mean, there was if there was an environment available to Albert, then yeah, absolutely. Corrected in pen to builds. Fair enough, so. And finally, uh, Ron has been watching his neighbor's daughter, Cindy, grow at a steady rate since he moved into the neighborhood almost two years earlier. Ron's sister, Amy, is the same age as Cindy. Ron has... Notice that Amy and Cindy are able to do about the same things. This has been true throughout the two years Ron was lived next door to Cindy's family. Correct characteristic of development. Development is interrated. Correct in red pen to similar. Okay, so I I'm... Chris is for the like for the most part just getting these wrong and stuff like... Uh, I mean... Yeah, okay. Maria is helping her younger sister, Joni, learn the alphabet. She seems to be catching on quickly. Yesterday, Joni could even pick some of the letters out of written words in one of her books. Maria knows that soon Joni will be able to point out a few simple words. Later, she will be able to read short phrases and sound out words. Characteristic of development, developments continuous throughout life, to builds is so... Yeah, in case you're wondering like, what this is meant to be, it's literally if we, it, it it builds on earlier learning and proceeds at an individual rate, stuff like that. And again, if we're going through what I think they're trying to uh, coach us uh, through with these sorts of with these sorts of questions, is that different areas of. But again, I'm still going for the gung ho for the idea that Michael just needed glasses. Rachel, Martha, and uh, Juan are all four-year-olds attending the same childcare centre. Martha is slightly shorter than the other two children. She is very good at playing with others. Rachel is the tallest of the three and the most coordinated. Juan is somewhere between the two girls in size and likes to play quietly by himself in the sandbox. Characteristic of development, development proceeds at an individual rate. What exactly... Are these going to be on the test? What exactly... Is the uh the 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 bit what exactly are these leading up to? That's what I want to know. And also, 1999, Chris would have been 17 years old when he he was doing these. Mark is a senior at his local high school. He has just received a scholarship for his literary achievement. Right now, Mark is looking forward to spring because he plans to run track and hopes to improve his speed from last year. Recently. His uncle Joseph offered Mark a part-time job at the grocery store he manages. Mark plans to take the job and work until he starts college in the fall. Characteristic of development, development is continuous throughout life. I mean, the, he's not wrong. I mean, I, I, Diane and her family spent uh, a month last summer visiting relatives in Canada. Diane spent most of the month playing with her brother Brad and cousin Timothy. Both two years old. She found out that both boys could run fairly well, standing on one foot and climb stairs. By the end of the visit, Diane could see that the two children did many things alike. She thought this was surprising since Brad was born in the United States and Timothy was born in Canada. And the two had never met before. Characteristic development, development is similar for everyone. And finally, at play school one day, four-year-old Terry suddenly burst into tears. He had been given a worksheet to complete which required him to cut out a simple picture with blunt scissors, paste it in another picture, and colour it. Terry knew exactly where to paste the picture, and pasting was an activity he enjoyed. He also liked colouring and had already chosen two colours he would use, but Terry could not complete his picture because he could not make his scissors work. How do you not manage to make scissors work, though? C characteristic of development, development built on earlier learning. No, it doesn't, it's interlated. 14, The Developing Child Student Workbook. Copyright, uh, Glencoe. Okay, so, um, once again, I'm having to, like, run on my brains a little bit about wondering what was even the point in that exercise anyway. I'd, what what exactly was Chris going to be known about these sorts of things? I, I, I've never, I've never seen anything, have to, had to do anything like that when I was in uh, high school. Help this unborn child. 
I think Chris needed all the help he could get. He barely even touched this. A worksheet about behaviours which may adversely affect parental development. Chris wrote that severally, several seemingly random things can cause slow minds, and completely ignored about half of the risk factors mentioned. Yet, for some reason, he still received a grade of 14 out of 20, a C-. Uh, transcription, Chris's answers are in italics. Chapter 3, Parental Development, uh, Help This Unborn Child. You know, considering that Chris always wanted, you know, dating education to be in school, but I think the idea of, you know, actual family education, this this is the, probably the sort of thing Chris probably should have been able to learn as well. It's a pity that he didn't, but we'll, we'll be the judge of that. Directions. How the mother-to-be takes care of herself greatly affects parental development. Well, that would explain a lot. Read each situation below, explain which of the mother's health habits may be hazardous to the newborn baby, and why Y is circled in blue pen. 1. Carolyn is excited about the birth of her first child. However, some of the changes coming up will be hard to get used to. For example, she plans to quit smoking soon after the baby is born, since she thinks it might be harmful to the child. In the meantime, Carolyn and John look up on the pregnancy as their last fling before they became parents. Every weekend, they attend parties where lots of beer is served. Every weekend, they is underlined in red pen. Smoking causes the baby to have less birth weight. <laughs> Alcohol causes the baby to have a slow mind. Teacher wrote FAS, need rest, and minus one in red pen. Yeah, um... Well, that's like a slow mind, like... That's, that's, I mean, unless there's actually anything, uh, but Chris actually just studied anything remotely resembling biology where all the time when he was in uh, high school. Uh, what else did he write? I, I need to know what else he's, he's done. Earlier this week, Sandra woke up with a terrible cold. Since she is preparing for maternity leave, she doesn't want to miss any days at the office. I don't know, you, when a baby could come any time in, in these sorts of things. I think, you know, planning for maternity should be uh, a priority at this point, And it could, occur, it, what happens if the baby comes early? These sorts of things. Miss any days at the office is underlined in red pen. Sandra decided to increase her intake of vitamins to boost her energy level. She found some nose drops in the medicine cabinet and has been taking these along with several aspirin each day. Some medical drugs cause the baby to have less body weight and have slow minds. Teacher wrote, take needed time in red pen. You know, some medical drugs, yes, but does that, does that go for like aspirin or for any of the vitamins that uh, Carolyn was taking? Or Sandra? Well... Clearly, this is something that maybe Chris... Why is... It... Also, it probably won't be the last time, but Chris seems to be rather confident in having to put slow minds as though that's the only other thing that could happen, like, as far as Chris is concerned, uh, with somebody who was born with somewhat defects, shall we say. Three. Elaine's second child is due in five months. She is busy getting ready for the new arrival. Since pregnancy has been going so well, Elaine decided not to cut down on her favourite foods, chocolate, coffee and soft drinks. Elaine's x-rays at her dental appointment last week had revealed no tooth decay. She really does feel good. However, since several neighbourhood children have had rubella recently, she has decided to ask her doctor for the vaccine on her next visit. Uh, and just for reference, ladies and gentlemen, I know Chris probably won't put this in, but rubella is what's also referred to as German measles. Every day is a school day, as they say. Chocolate, coffee, he, he misspells coffee when it's literally right here, and soft drinks, caffeine, cause the baby to not have, not get all the nutrients, be hyperactive. Be very hyperactive. Where? Where does where does that happen, Chris? That's that is not how that works. Teacher wrote caffeine minus three and no X rays or vaccines because in red pen. 
you know, it's it's very scary because not because Chris is more uh, adamant on the idea that he doesn't really know about what pregnancy is or probably even let's let's take it for granted let's just take it for granted ladies and gentlemen that Chris doesn't actually have a womb at all and won't be able to actually conceive his own children because if this is his as far as he's concerned his knowledge about pregnancy goodness knows what would happen if Chris was somehow to get pregnant what a dreadful thought I know but let's keep let's party on Marty has a fear of gaining too much weight while she is pregnant a few years ago, her doctor prescribed amphetamines for a weight loss program. Marty has had some of the pills left over, so she is using them to curb her appetito. In addition, she skips breakfast and lunch and only and eats a small dinner. Skipping meals and only taking medication will cause the baby to not get the nutrients it needs. That's way too simplistic for what that is. In red pen, the teacher wrote minus two and one half in margin and circled, taking medication, drawing an arrow to where she wrote amphetamines cause. <sighs> my, my, this, is, this just gets dumber and dumber and dumber. For uh, chapter one study guide, for this worksheet about child development, Chris seems to have uh, regurgitated sentences from a textbook, which makes it a boring read. Of note is that he gave television as an example of a child's environment. Possibly shedding some light on Bob's parenting techniques. Okay, so directions. As you read the chapter, answer the following questions. Later, you can use this guide to study the chapter information. Children in your life. 1. What three things influence your relationship with young children? Your interest in children, knowledge of stages, and skill in applying that knowledge. I would I would say no to all of... Well, Chris, no. Okay, listen. What three things influence your relationship with uh, young children? You invest your time in your children. You take an interest in what they are interested in which means you get to know more you you get to know who your children are you know what they like and you take an interest in developing and learning about uh, so they can learn more about the things they like it's that's 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 how well that's basically how that is and chris i don't think worded any of that no survey why study children two Name three benefits of learning about children. You learn about the person you are. That's not really what that... It's a sh It's about learning about your kids, not learning. Not about you, Chris. You learn about the child you were, and you learn about the adult you will be. You know what, I don't normally do this, but you know what, I'm just going to put this in here one second. I feel like this the, the, the situation calls for it, so take it away. Sheriff, listen to me. They know all about Sweet and Devereaux. I figured that the Silver Streak should be in Kansas in an hour. We could stop the train at Scott City, or maybe Dodge. All right, mister! Just keep your hands where they are and we'll have no trouble. Give me that. Don't shoot. Don't shoot? You stupid, ignorant son of a bitch, dumb bastard. Jesus Christ, I've met some dumb bastards in my time, but you outdo them all. Get over there. Yeah, I know I might have been dragging that out a bit, but to be honest, I had to play that out because that might be one of the single worst answers I've ever seen anybody give on a test in my entire life. This is this is unironically the friggin' worst answer I think I've ever possibly have come across. You know how they say there are no such thing as like dumb questions? Well, guess what? There are there is such a thing as dumb answers. And you know what? This is, you know how, you know, there are some people on the internet, they will literally say, you know, write about, and somebody will just literally put in a big word, no, with a frowny face and stuff like that. No, Chris isn't even clever. 
and you learn about the adult you will be. It, Chris, if you hadn't gotten your act together by the time your first child was on its way, it's not you, you're not it's not going to happen, Chris. It's you've got it. You've Ah, oh, God. It's so fucking frustrating, this. How can learning about children help you get along with them better? You will apply learning to everyday life. You learn practical techniques and you will discover that children are fun. Chris... Chris, I, I'm, I'm, the, 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 forget me reading this in 2024. What was going through the, the, probably the minds of the teachers 25 years ago when they had to read this? The, these, this is just, this is like, okay, in the, in, in the interest of fairness, here is personally what I would have said. In, if, if, I, if I was answering this question. How can learning about children help you get along with them better? By investing time with my own children, I get to know about what they learn. I get to know about how they are learning. I get to know if they struggle with things that they uh, have difficulty in comprehending and understanding from basic maths to writing to... Uh, phonics to pr pronunciation to learning about uh, the environment they live in and learning about my own kids uh, will uh, get I, I will reinforce myself as the authoritative figure as a parent so that they will know exactly that I would be as, as I would be a reliable source for them to look up to and to inquire and answer questions they may have about the world. And again, and listen, it's probably no hyperbole considering about, considering just what I know of Chris's like childhood development. But I wonder legitimately, had Chris, I, I don't want to say had Chris ever thought about it, but I'm now going to say, I wonder if Chris's, like, developments was just so, like, he, he never, I wonder if he ever gave any thought about, like, whether he thought the way he was brought up was right or wrong. I wonder if any of this, like, even occurred to him. We know that uh, Chris forgave Bob and Bob about Roche, saying that they didn't know any better. But now, but no, no, that's not the, that, that, that doesn't seem to cut the mustard. Because I know, again, Chris was autistic and stuff like that. But Bob and Bob had like three kids by this point. They should have, forget how the severity of Chris's autism for one second. But didn't they, maybe the answer was no. Maybe that's what I think the issue is. The answer is simply no. And you will discover that children are fun. Chris, children are not toys. I don't... I, I actually can't believe I had to say that, but I'm glad I did because I had to paint a picture for Chris because maybe that's just Chris sees the world sometimes is that he thinks some people are just toys. Things that toys only distinct from each other with moving parts and parts he probably can't wind up himself what is childhood what is uh, one of the most important concepts that have emerged from the study of children they have special needs as they grow and learn um i'm not entirely well not not in all cases i mean this is one that's uh, most important concepts that emerge from the study of children is that I would say is that uh, from days gone by where kids would have to work, you know, uh, chimney sweeping or working down coal mines, we learned that uh, they 
they they are they are vulnerable to the very harsh sides of reality and uh we we that they there are things about the world that they are not prepared for because again there are there are concepts in the world that children are obviously don't understand through lack of experience so you've got to like in, you've got to introduce the world to children by degrees you've you've got to you know you've got to let let them experience the world you've got to let, let them experience the life but i would say perhaps the the most important concept is for a child to learn uh the difference between knowing and understanding a child might under know why their mother and father love them very much but a child might not understand why he is lo he is loved by both parents. I've actually, to be honest, I've roamed things before where I am sticking to that rule by saying that the most important concept in the study of children is for children to learn the uh, the difference between knowing and understanding. Yeah, true true story. That's and I, and I take uh, great pleasure in uh, this idea of my, this methodology. Sorry about that. Um, childhood, past, and present. How did people in colonial days uh, think children differed from adults? Only in size, experience, and abilities. Mm, I would definitely. Well, okay, maybe Chris is okay. I, okay, maybe abilities is very skewed. Experience, yes. Size, well, it's that's just kind of like through you know. Uh, natural that's that just through like uh, the natural cycle is that you know you, you when you when you're born you don't emerge uh, the size of, of a fully grown adult that's so i would uh, probably give him a pass on that give three examples of the differences between childhood in the past and childhood today health and nutrition dress and parental love Ironically, this is children are expected to work hard at an early age. I mean, yeah, Chris was not wrong about this. Now, I, I get like I said before, but maybe this is specifically ref referencing you know uh, children who worked in Br well in Britain during the Victorian era. So maybe this is like only applicable to like kids in the U.S. But I don't even think this is necessarily a bad answer necessarily. Dress and parental love, but that's uh, nu nutrition and dress. That's just more like as the years have gone by and we understand about why things like fruit and vegetables are so important uh, in developing a child's, you know, uh, physical stand. Seven. Why can uh, ch childhood be called a recent discovery, even though there have always been children? In the past, parents had little awareness of their special needs. And again, Chris refers to this as special needs, which, um, but I would say, well, I would have just put that uh, children, uh, children do not have the benefit of foresight about knowing how the world works, owing to a lack of development and a lack of understanding and knowledge about the world. So maybe you could say potato, patata, but that's, that's how I'm just putting it. It's like half past ten at night. Why on earth am I answering questions about childhood and child development? The growth of child study. Where can you find information about growth and development of children? Books, articles, radio and television uh, programs on the subject of child development. Why not the library, Chris? I mean, yes, books, but where can you get books on this sort of thing? I mean, he's not that wrong about it, I suppose, but... He doesn't even give any reference to any specific shows or books or radio programs whatsoever. Characteristics of development. I mean, well, and again, I don't even think that uh, uh, Dr. Bonofsky's Civilization would even have a program about childhood development. By the way, if you've never actually seen Civilization with Dr. Bonofsky, you probably should. It's arguably one of the greatest uh, documentaries ever made probably alongside the world at war characteristics of development explain in your own words what the following characteristics of development mean 
Development is similar for everyone. Children all over the world go through the same but different stages of development. Not true. What about uh, children who die in infancy and die very young? Development builds on earlier learning. Development follows an orderly sequence step by step. Again, what about in third world countries where children don't have access to schools or any sort of education whatsoever? Development proceeds at an individual rate. Style and rate of growth differ from one child to another. That's not real. That's that's a very gross uh, simplification about this. Individual rates uh, differ variously from from outside of uh, from chromosomes and genes passed on by parents. You've also got to take a look at uh, their home life. Do they have like access to uh, uh, wide open spaces, fresh air? There's a lot more to this, and it's about, do they have a set pattern? Do they read? How much television do they consume? What is their diet uh, consisting of? It's, there. It, well, it is, but it's basically a bit, there's a bit more substance to basically what Chris is trying to state. The different areas of development are interrated. All areas of development interact continually. That's... Mm, kind of not quite true. Development is continuous throughout life. Sometimes development is rapid and sometimes it is much slower. Um, yes, I, I suppose that's true as well. Um, the imp Here's the thing I've actually, I've come to like a, a, a little bit of an epiphany about this is that Chris is probably not even wrong, but it's just the way it's so underworded and it doesn't... It, th th there should be more to this is what I'm putting out there. The importance of play. Identify four ways uh, that play benefits the development of children. Physically, intellectually, emotionally and socially. Well, that... No, that... It's not... No, not... I mean, yes, he's not wrong, but... Okay, the development... No, because you have to understand, well, one, play means uh, it is a break from having, to work, from having to work or from having to do things related to school. It's about being able to engage in children in, uh, in, 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 in things that, uh, you know, um, they, they, they may find stimulating. There is a stimulus involved in play is what we're going... Is, is sort of what we're talking about here. So you stimulate, you can stimulate a child intellectually, physically, emotionally, and socially, because there is an there is an appeal to play that is so enriching and nurturing in the eyes of children, because they see it as something to be enjoyed, to uh, be put, to take part in. Influences uh, on development. Name two major influences on development and give an example of each. Hereditary, physical characteristics, environment, television. Well, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Television probably triumphs the natural world. Like, you know, like a, like a football pitch, a field, a back garden, a basketball court, a swimming pool, and hereditary, physical characteristics. Physical? What? What do you? Uh, no, hereditary is no. Hereditary is what uh, is passed on. What? Uh, what genes and chromosomes are passed on to uh, their offspring, and what and certain characteristics that will affect uh, their behavior. Chapter two: Case stu a Study Guide. The worksheet seems to be more regulated textbook material, but Chris found subtle ways to screw it up. Like using mathematical inequalities, see also using Spanish in his English homework, and failing to cross a couple t T's. He also doesn't seem able to understand the concept of adoption, referring to it as a right to raise a child who is biologically their own. What? Study guide. 
As you read the chapter, answer the following questions. Later, you can use this guide to study the chapter information. The importance of family. Okay, maybe tech. The only thing I could possibly point to where I say I might have learned about stuff like this was when I was doing uh, RS classes. I think either. 2011 or possibly 2013 that might realistically be when I've studied well had to learn about stuff like this when I was either 13 or 15 years old when I was about 15 years old I would have to learn about things understand things about like nuclear families and uh, multicultural societies I mean now, to be honest, I it wasn't really because it, it, I think it was just more to teach us that this is just we li it was just a, it was just a way for the government to tell the world we live in a multicultural society and there's not really much else we could do about it apart from just let people know exactly what the right terms are and telling them to know what a nuclear family is. I would say probably when I was about thirteen, the st the, the study was a little bit more closer related to family and a lot more about um it was more about trying to understand through things like adolescence because I was just a teenager like a young teenager back then so it probably made more sense in that case so I say there might have come a point where I had to like do stuff like this so there that there it is the importance of families what is a family Group of two or more people who care about and are committed to each other. That's very, very, very... I would say a unit uh, of uh, people... A... Boy, even I'm like struggling a little bit to get my words out. Uh, two, why do people have a need for families? They're everyone's child's first connection to the world. Um... I would say a family uh, provide a family provides uh, a, uh, a, a a family provides uh, a provides uh, you know a roof, shelter, food, uh, clothing, accommodation, love, care, nurturing, support. They are they are there to raise and to look after the, the themselves and uh, their own children. And to make sure that they are prepared for the world. And tied, I would say tied by blood as well. And, and that's like, what is, I, I would say a family is more like connected through blood uh, more than anything. But again, like I said, it's nearly 22, 11 at night. And I don't know what I was thinking for trying to do stuff like this after the day I've had. Types of families. Explain in your own words what each of the following types of families Nuclear, a mother, father, and ex, uh, more than one child sharing the same household. Um, living in the same household, perhaps. Extended, parents, children, and other relatives sharing the same household. Single parent, one parent and one child sharing the same household. It could be more than, well, okay, more than one, I should say. Blended. Married couple and uh, ch child or children from parents' previous relationship. Four, name and describe two ways of becoming a parent other than being a biological parent. Adoption, a right to raise a child who is biologically their own, who, who may not be biologically their own. Foster child, child with parents who are unable to care for it. So I think Chris somehow got it a little bit backwards with these two. Anyway, the family life cycle. Record a, re and re a reward and challenge that may occur in each stage of the family cycle. Beginning, home, challenge, establishing home. Childbearing, a ba reward, a baby. Yes, there you are. Ch <laughs> Noise and shit. Noise and changes. And put two dollar signs there. Oh my god. <laughs> Actually, well, 
ironically, Chris says that, but when it actually comes to Chris's development, and I know fine well he's probably putting himself in this, records show he was very, very quiet. Well, as far as the records show. Um, child rearing. Teaching the child what you know. That, that, not dischallenge disorder. Not maybe half the things that my parents were telling me were absolute horseshit, but fair enough. Launching. Child learns how to support him slash herself. Chris is sort of like caught between the, between these two. Child in process of leaving. Cha-ching. Empty nest. Renew relationship. No child around. Changes. Retirement. New old interests. Failing. Failing health is the challenge. Oh, Chris... I mean, again, he's probably not even wrong, but, oh, God help us. Trends affecting family systems. Explain how each of the fa following family trends affect society on a whole. Increased mobility. No supportive connection with friends and family. More women in the workforce. Less time with child. More stress from both parents. Need for facilities and individuals that provide quality child care. Rising population of older citizens. Encouragement of family unity. The need for healthier families. What role does the family play in the socialization of family members? Children learn about uh, acceptable behavior. Well, there are probably a lot of other things that ch children need to learn about acceptable behavior because Chris doesn't really state what counts as acceptable behavior. How can families be strengthened? Name three steps in strengthening families. Knowing what to look for, ID strengths of their family, and improve areas that need strengthening. Chris, you you just said the same thing three times. Like, no, three things in strengthening families. Uh, family bonding, i.e. sitting at the table together for dinners, actually engaging in conversation with each other, Helping uh, children out uh, with their homework or just spending time talking to them, talking them to about school, talking about their friends, engaging your children and perhaps they will engage in terms with you because over time children will learn to understand such concept concepts of sensitivity and about the importance of needing to know why parents need to uh, know about what's going on with their children it's it's called it's called uh, ap it's called uh, empathy and it's called it's it's called it's just just getting to know your kids it's just i don't know what else i meant to say to that name three ways in which parenthood can be rewarding members show commitment appreciation and effective coping skills hmm I mean, I suppose that one's really more applicable to Chris's uh, methodology, I suppose. Well, with that being said, well, considering what Chris would later go on to say about, you know, him still thinking that he needs to birth a daughter named Crystal and how he doesn't want his children to have autism, well, I don't really think Chris will be able to cope with that. Making decisions about parenthood. Explain in your own words why each of the following considerations is important to the decision of whether to have children. Emotional maturity. To become better able to handle situations. Desire for parenthood. To be sure of their decision. Health. Health of parents could affect child before it is born. Affect. It puts in a way I should say. Management skills. Parenting is a complex task. Understatement of the century, Chris. Financial considerations, expenses for child will increase. Lego. <laughs> and and by the way, we're only like only just halfway into this. Good Lord. Um, chapter five study guide. I'm going to actually take a short breather right now because I just need to like breathe and stuff like that for a few seconds. So uh, back one second. Okay, so after nearly 13 hours later, we are now ready to continue. So, here we are. As you read the chapter, answer the following questions. The importance of families. What is a family? 
group of two or more people who care about and are committed to each other. Well, it's it's specifically more about you know there being a distinctive difference between uh, parent and child, perhaps. Two. Why do people uh, have a need for families? They're every they're every child's first connection to the world. Somewhat, and also we I know we went over these sorts of things, so we'll go to family life cycle that we've already done as well. But apparently, retirement, failing health. That's he's not even wrong, but I think it's just how he kind of like about about that uh, trends affecting family systems. Explain how each of the following family trends affect society as a whole. Increased mobility, no supportive connection with friends and family. More women in the workforce, less time with child, more stress for both parents, slash need for facilities and individuals that provide quality childcare. Rising population of older citizens, encouragement of family unit. The need for healthy families. What, does, uh, what role does the family play in the socialization of family members? Children learn about acceptable behavior. Behavior, I mean, kind of yes, but that's entirely dependent on you know who's taking care of them and who are they associating with. How can families be strengthened? Name three steps for strengthening families: knowing what to look for, ID strengths of their family, and improve areas that need strengthening. That Chris, it's a family. It's not a house. Nine, name three ways in which parenthood can be rewarding. Members show commitment. That's, no, that's not really, that's not a reward. rewarding, is that commitment is rewarding. Well, it's about what you can be, be you can gain through commitment. That's the, what I think Chris messed up here. Appreciation, okay, but appreciation for who? And effective coping skills. I'm only, I'm sort of almost thinking about that's falling under the umbrella for Chris, considering that all children have some sort of special uh, extra attention uh, uh, attached to them. Making decisions about parenthood. Explain in your own words why each of the following considerations is important to, to the decision to of whether to have children. Emotional maturity. To become better able to handle situations. Can you though? Desire for a parenthood to be sure of their decision. Decision for what? Well, de that no, a, de a desire for parenthood is a desire to start. Should be like a desire to start a family to raise your own flesh and blood. Health. Health of parents could affect a child before it is born. That's just very poorly worded. That answer. Management skills. Parenting is a complex task. He says, and literally, like, a, a whole a five-worded sentence. Yes, parenting is very complex. Moving on. And he, he says it's like a task, as though it's something you're going to be judged upon. I mean, well, yes, you are, but... My God, my, maybe I need to, like, revisit my education for doing this. Financial considerations. Expenses for child will increase. Not Well, yes, not, not always, but... Well... Again, that's why you teach them about, like, you know, work and stuff like that. Chapter 5, Study Guide. Chris misspelled a couple of words, but other than that, the worksheet is just more boring textbook uh, paraphrasing. This time about parental development. As you read the chapter, answer the following questions. Parental development. Parental development is development of baby during, uh, pe during period before birth. You mean pregnancy. And also, that's not parental development. I do apologise. Well, just a hunch. Conception. Define. Ovum. Female egg, cell, or egg. Uterus. Organ in woman's body in which a baby develops during pregnancy. Um, sperm. Male cell. Conception. Union or joining of one egg and one sperm resulting in beginning of pregnancy. That it results in conception, not necessarily pregnancy. Well, okay, but maybe I'm being a little bit too facetious on that one. Uh, zygote, uh, fertilized egg. Period of the zygote. The first stage in the development of a baby is the zygote period that lasts two weeks. 
The zygote attaches to the uterus and is the size of a pinhead at the end of two weeks. Period of the embryo. The second stage of the pregnancy is the embryo period, and lasts from the third week to the eighth week of pregnancy. Here, okay, so I'm just sort of like scan reading this a little bit, but to the baby it takes waste products from the baby. I mean, aside from just how it's phrased, it's not really... It's, 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 he's, for the most part, he's pretty much got this right. What are your five options for infertile couples? Well, considering we know Chris's uh, views on abstinence, this, this can only go well. Adoption. Legally providing a home for one or more children who don't have a home. Artificial insemination. Injection of male sperm into a woman's uterus with a special needle during the woman's fertile period. In vitreo fertilization. A doctor removes an egg from a woman, puts it in a glass dish with a special solution, adds husband's sperm slash turkey baster, and implants zygote back into women's uterus. Ovum transfer... Well, again, th these are just... Th th these are right. Uh, the empathy belly essay. Chris describes the experience of wearing an empathy belly, complete with disturbing, honest content. Oh, God. Okay, what does he say? While my legs were separated, it put pressure on my private part, which gave me a strange, weird fit. And I've read too much of that already. Good Lord. How it was like to wear the empathy belly. Having a belly like a pregnant woman was really an awkward experience. While I wore the belly, I was walking like as if my legs were out of balance. Also, when I tried to get my pencil bag out of my backpack, the belly held me back by putting pressure on my left leg. Luckily, my arms were long, but if they were any shorter, I would have had a real problem to reach the pencil bag. And when I laid on the floor and tried to get up, the gravity... The gravity... The, the, no, the gravity doesn't make you do shit, Chris. That's gravity. That's not how gravity works. It made the belly put pressure on me, and it made me fall on my right side. Finally, while I was sitting in my chair, the belly made it uncomfortable for me to cross my legs. And while my legs were separated, it put pressure on my private part and gave me a strange, weird feeling. So it was quite an experience while I had a belly like a pregnant woman. Yes, and by the way, Chris was 17 years old when he wrote this, by the way. Thank you, by the way. Um, US government. Oh, God. Amendment timeline. Okay, so this is where... We sort of get into the period of how Chris is sort of strange uh, misunderstandings about specific times during war. An illustrated timeline between, briefly describing the 27 amendments to the US Constitution, as it is to be expected, Chris used multiple differing conventions for writing out dates and made numerous prominent factual spelling and grammatical errors, which are preserved in the transcription. Notably, Chris seems to have read the antiquated language used in the older amendments at completely literal face value, with no sense of interpretation, leading him to getting many facts and details wrong. For example, while most every true American patriot knows the 13th Amendment and the amendment that ended slavery, it also contains a uh, parenthetical, uh, parenth uh, parenthetical stating uh, that involuntary servitude as conviction for a crime would continue to exist in the United States. Chris seems to have focused on this minor detail about crime punishment, rather than the momentous occasion of freeing the slaves as the entire purpose of the amendment, and even included an illustration implying that the 13th Amendment created slavery for criminals, while the 23rd Amendment actually gave voting rights to citizens of Washington, D.C., Chris seems to have confused District of Columbia for referring to Columbia, South Carolina, and drew a picture of the state uh, pleased that it can now vote for president. This may have something to do with South Carolina not adopting a popular vote for president until 1868, making it by far the last state to do so, although this is probably giving Chris too much credit. In actuality, the 24th Amendment abolishes poll taxes, while Chris makes it seem like it suddenly requires them. Additionally, the 26th Amendment doesn't apply exclusively to men. It gives uh, suffrage to all Americans 18 and older, regardless of sex. His uh, interpretation of the 11th Amendment, that people of other countries can't blame US for their troubles, is completely inexplicable. 
Chris glosses over most of the Bill of Rights amendments, including the First Amendment that allows him to behave the way he does over the internet, claiming the whole thing simply means innocent until proven guilty. No, that's like, peep. I need to read this again. His interpretation of the 11th Amendment that people of other countries can't blame US for their troubles. Well, one, that's not true. Also, it doesn't necessarily mean people won't do that. I mean, exa why, why would somebody, let's say, from uh, Nigeria, for example, what's stopping somebody from Nigeria blaming the US, and what exactly can the US do about it if it is far from uh, the jurisdiction of the, uh, the the nation of Nigeria? How? What exactly can they do? What, ex what force is there to stop uh, the people of Nigeria from doing that? Just Just as an example. Also, Chris glosses over most of the Bill of Rights amendments, including the First Amendment that allows him to behave the way he does over the internet. Innocent until proven guilty. Well, considering that I plan to do a very long video, and considering I've talked about Chris's crimes already, that would, would suggest that Chris may want to think twice before saying stuff like that. Dear Lady, pay up. Congress. Here And here it is. 27th Amendment Timeline. December 15, 1791, Bill of Rights Amendments 1 to 10. Everyone shall have innocent till proven guilty, speech bubble, even though I have guilt on my face, I am innocent till proven. That's that sort of that sort of, that sort of illustration isn't even good enough for the Daily Telegraph, let alone for a, a, a uh, for 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 a high school seniors uh, project about uh, the about the about the constitution. February 7th, 1795, 11th Amendment. People of other countries can't blame US for their troubles. Horribly misshapen land masses labeled Canada, USA, Mexico, Europe, and Africa. Speech bubble, help. Okay, maybe that one is actually quite good enough for the Daily Telegraph. Congratulations, Chris. July 27th, 1809, 12th Amendment. Majority of votes for president for one state equals one vote for that president. Speech bubble, Virginia, I'm for Clinton. Clinton, 26, Bushwell, 24. Virginia didn't vote for Bushwell. Terrific. Chris probably should have known that, but again, does it really matter? Well, I guess I suppose it does, but there you are. 1865, December 6, 13th Amendment. Slavery shall only be used as crime punishment. Speech bubble, Thanks to Unlucky 13, I'm in here, mumbling. Moving on. 1868, July 6, 9th. 14th Amendment. Those are born in US are US citizens. Okay, I have to sort of like take a bit of an issue for this because um, when I was on the phone to US immigration a number of days ago, uh, they discuss with me very briefly about um, many of the benefits if I received my green card and I lived uh, uh, lived to the U.S. in which I could apply for uh, a U.S. to be a U.S. citizen, which I would outside of being probably the first in my family to do something like that. It should say well. I mean, yes, those are born in U.S. should in many ways, be a U.S. citizen, unless they actually have, like, documentation. There's there's probably a lot of this that Chris just doesn't really seem to have, like, grasped, that even people who are, like, say, born in Mexico might not necessarily be uh, citizens of Mexico if they had, you know, uh, documentation, like a passport or a birth certificate to suggest that whilst they may have been born in Mexico, they were registered to be in the U.S. So... I I don't I feel I feel like there's there's steps missing to this. I'm not a history uh, uh, teacher or anything like that. And actually, the U.S. Constitution is a little bit um, out of my field of expertise. My sort of thing was a lot more European history, but that's besides the point. February third, eighteen seventy, fifteenth amendment. No matter what race or color, they will vote. Speech bubble, oddly from a white person, yippee, finally I can vote. Well, 
1913, February 5th, 16th Amendment, Congress shall collect taxes. Document with heading Congress reading, Dear Lady, Pay Up. April 8th, 1913, 17th Amendment, Senate of US, which is equals to two people from each state. Speech bubble, we are Senates. Figure labeled Bob, Mary, and Virginia. Note, in reality, the Senate was always two people from each state, and the 17th Amendment made them directly elected rather than appropriated by state legislatures. So, yes, Chris got both things wrong at the exact same time. January 16th, 1919, 18th Amendment, Prohibition of Liquor from U.S., Bottle Labour, B. Ear. Um, let's let's just imagine that Chris was trying to riff a joke from The Simpsons. You you know the one where they go to Australia and there's a guy who tries to who like that bartender literally just says B. Ear. I'm I am going to assume that is what Chris was trying to go for because Chris's humor is just well all over the place. 1920, August 18th. 19th Amendment. Women can vote. Speech bubble, I can vote too. Um, I'm more than certain to say that there's... It's... But he, okay. Just so I think people understand this, is that I feel as if that's... Chris may have need to, like, revise that, because as far as I'm concerned, uh... Women got the right to vote in the UK in 1919, literally almost, di almost like a month or so after the First World War ended. However, it was only towards women over the age of 30, or it might have been somewhere. It might have been 30. It might have been 25. Is that? It's there was a very harsh limit to the actual age in which women could actually vote. So. This probably cuts out uh, a, a good deal that probably needs to be elaborated. January 23rd, 1933, the 20th Amendment. Presidential and Vice Presidency terms expire January 20th. Lame duck, duck pictogram, calendar, January 1999, Prophet Bill Clinton. Speech bubble, Clinton, my day is almost here. Note, Clinton's uh, second presidency term did not expire until 20th of January 2001. Lots of uh, favorable uh, uh, favors for the for the Clinton family. I seem to have noticed in a lot of Chris's videos, whether it's Bill or Hillary, maybe because like them, Chris would want want people. Maybe Chris is secretly deep down one of those people who says that well, Bing, Bill Clinton uh, couldn't be uh, guilty because until then he was completely innocent until proven guilty. I think December fifth, nineteen thirty three. 21st Amendment, repeal of prohibition, beer is allowed. Speech bubble, well, no, that's not, n not in all states of the US. There were plenty of states that still practiced prohibition until like the mid-1950s. But again, well, maybe, I don't know, probably. Speech bubble, uh, welcome, doe. Yeah, th that, that's given credence to the idea that Chris was trying to reference The Simpsons before. Ship labeled SS Anne carrying beer. 1951, February 27th, 22nd, 22nd Amendment, limit to limit a president to two terms, figures labelled first term and second term. I mean, yes, Chris did get that right. In fact, good Lord Chris knows this, because I, I almost feel like if, if I'm going to apply to be US, uh, a US citizen, then I would have to like know this practically like the back of my hand. March 29th, 1961. Columbia, Colum Columbia can vote for president. That's what uh, I'm not even going to address that. Moving on, January twenty third, nineteen sixty four, twenty fourth amendment. Voters need to pay poll taxes. Printer labeled poll tax box. Printout equals vote. Note: In reality, it was the exact opposite. The 24th Amendment prohibited federal and governments from requiring voters to pay poll taxes in order to vote. Also, this was like what the... This was just mentioned before this about how they wouldn't even do this like 100 years ago. So why did Chris seem to think it changed? And well, 
uh, because he didn't get it because he did he doesn't know what happens. 1967, February 10th, 25th Amendment, President's powers are reduced. Figures labelled before and after. Terrific. Uh, July 1st, 1971, Amendment 26. Young men of 18 years of age can vote. Speech bubble, hey hey, thanks for the cool car and the vote. 1992, the 27th Amendment. Salary changes must be made for Congress to pay themselves. Figures labelled to Congress before changes required. Tick. After. 1999. The end. That's one of the most fitting ways I've ever seen a, a, a stuff, something like this come to an end. With just the end to it. And now, oh god, there's even more. Look, oh god, it, women's movement notes. We'll, we'll get to, we'll, we'll come to this very shortly. Never passed. What should have happened to Chris in an ideal education system? Hmm. Chris's brief notes on the women's movement in the United States in the 1960s. Women's movement. Started from reaction to book The Feminine Mystique, written by housewife Betty Fryden, she wrote, As she made the beds, shopped for groceries, she was afraid to ask, Is this all? Changes begin. 1. Pay Act, passed in 1963. 2. Now, National Organization for Women, fought for passage of right amendments, never passed. This was apparently written uh, 15th of October 1998, so when Chris was just 16 years old when he wrote this piece. You know what? I, I I did it last time, but you know what? I'm gonna do it again. Sheriff, listen to me. They know all good. You stupid, ignorant son of a bitch, dumb bastard! Jesus Christ, I've met some dumb bastards in my time, but you outdo them all. I mean, yes, I know I played that clip from last night, but it bears repeating because I think that well. Really? That's it? Is is that... There's, Chris, look, took maybe one example from the... A one, one example from the book The Feminine Mystique, and that's it. Uh, by the way, guys, I, I should point out is that... Uh, don't think I'm trying to, like, be snide. I've never, I've never read The Feminine Mystique either, but I can tell you that there was a lot more to it than that. And we can see here just from... Uh, Follow directions is what his teacher gave him. Uh, establish net in supporting a religion. A free exercise. What is... I, I don't know exactly what this is meant to be, but uh, clearly Chris couldn't follow direction. Chapter 4, basic concepts. Chris didn't fill any of this out, so he, he, he was that friggin' lazy. He didn't even bother to actually... Well, 0 out of 10. Basic concepts and... Chris just doesn't... Chris... What did Chris do all day if he wasn't even doing this sort of work? And the work we've done in has some issues. What happens if I break the law? What crime did John commit? Uh, drunk driving. And contributing to the aid of a felon? I said, of delinquenting a felon. De delinquency, but maybe, perhaps. What rights do John and Bill have when arrested? Not a right to an attorney, which no, I'm pretty sure there's a little bit more to that. They have the the right to remain silent, and uh, anything they do say can be used in evidence in a court of law and all the, and all that. Because of the Miranda case, police must rely on police worth, not confessions. I'd love to know what sort of world we'd be living if that was if that's how it worked. And apparently, Chris got all the rest of these. Well, we got all of them wrong, apparently, so maybe I wasn't even wrong about these either. How is Bill's experience as a juvenile offender different than that of an adult? Could, is that condolences or comeuppance or... And... Can't, well, he didn't even answer it, that's why. Who determines uh, probable cause for a juvenile? 
uh, mathematically know uh, an, an intake uh, officer. What does John as an adult uh, go before to determine probable cause? Whatever this is. And uh, what is a bond and a lot of a lot of dollars for what? Name some things that should be considered when setting bail. Parent counselling and loan. How is Bill's trial different from John's? Judge has... Cons I'm just going to put this just in, in stone that I think Chris just didn't know what he was talking about. No, but no back. Okay, so it implies that there was he only answered half of these. Civil liberties, abridging due process, free exercise. So Chris got basically all of these right, but apparently he only did ha half the thing anyway. So actually, maybe this is the other side. Man, he also didn't bother filling out. Uh... Political spectrum. Place a check uh, before the statement, which you agree. Well, that one's a little bit more like... Whoop. And, and there's a little bit more here. And, oh yes, by the way, this is it. are we talking about like the war in Korea, Korean War geography? I mean, yes, fa thank you so much, Chris, for la labelling out what China, Soviet Union, and, you know... Credit to at least Chris for sort of knowing where all this was. And for what they're worth, we'll finally just cover this one part here. Quick, why only one point? Why? <laughs> what did... What was... I, I want to know what the hell this was. What What do you mean, why? What, did Chris just, like, answer a question and just... Well, it's like he got given some homework and he was literally just told Why? Chris is a rebel without reason and without a cause. The uh, Strategic D Defense Initiative essay. The Strategic Defense Initiative was a system Reagan proposed in 1983. It was never actually implemented, at least not even close to how Reagan uh, proposed it, in terms of technology and scale, and certainly not during his presidency. Despite that, Chris vomited up this four-sentence essay on how the system of zappers and mirrors in space defended against evil empire. Granted, the assignment asked him to defend against the evil empire, but he still didn't follow most of the instructions. He still got yet another perfect grade. Note that the teacher misspelled the names of several terms slash people in the heading, and that the debt increase Chris, uh, Chris gave for SDI is comically low. Reagan increased the defense budget by tens of billions of dollars, not millions. All that ev evidence seems to suggest his teacher should not have been hired. Transaction. Uh, okay, so essay ten points is is was that what how much this was worth or is that how much Chris got for? Okay, um, here we go. Explain in detail one event that occurred during Reagan's presidency that illustrates how Reagan would defend against the evil empire at all costs. You must name the country event and describe it in as much detail as possible, conclude by stating if and how the goal was achieved and the evil empire was contained. The Strategic Defense Initiative was a way Reagan defended against the evil empire. This occurred in the US, and it was a system of zappers and mirrors in space that would destroy a nuclear missile before it would hit the US. It was achieved by adding $70 million into debt in defense. The SDI was a way Reagan would have defended against evil empire. That might have been, that's possibly the single worst essay short of the feminine mind, uh, the, the feminine mystique that Chris did earlier. Election Worksheet This worksheet deals with various aspects of elections, such as voting, political campaigns, etc. As in several other documents for non-Spanish projects, Chris used broken Spanish for some of his answers here, although he provided English translations for most of it. Oh, that was kind of him. And explained in the margin that he was practicing his Sp He was practicing his Spanish, as he calls it. Despite the irrelevant, incorrect use of Spanish and the extremely simple answers, this worksheet again received a perfect grade. In a presidential election, whom do voters actually choose? What do these people do? 
Public office holds work on la office. Chris completely oblivious that this was asking about the electoral college. Um, trans Chris is written in italics. Who uses a ballot for what purposes? Voters to place their choices in la elección. In the margin, Chris wrote, note, Yo uh, practico mi español para el escribir bon las tracciones. I'm practicing my Spanish, but I wrote translations and drew an arrow to number two. <sighs> Who attends a nominating convention and what do these people do? Political parties, uh, de sociosos candidates, yeah, select uh, delegacios to choose its candidates and to select delegates. What is the difference between a closed primary and an open primary? Closed primary, only party members vote. Open primary, all voters can vote. You know what? Again, I, I don't even... I'm just going to just... Without knowing, I'm just going to say this 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 can't be... I, I, have, can, I have some suspicions. And again, this is probably because I'll have to know about this as well. Even though technically I can't... If, if I was to become a US citizen, I wouldn't be able to vote. Well... I probably would, but I wouldn't be able to run for president, if that makes sense. What does a campaign manager do? El coordinates le plan la campaign strategy. He coordinates and plans campaign strategy. Was that really just... Name and briefly describe three different positions on a campaign staff. Fundraisers. Raises money to subsidize campaign. Press, <coughs> Press secretary. Maintains press contacts this uh, emanating campaign news. Lawyers, yeah, accountants, monitor, legal, yeah, fancy aspects of campaign. What does a political consultant do? Helps a shape candidate's image. Manage campaign advertising. Who uses uh, tracting polls? For what purposes? Mas candidates se find out como bien ellos son competo for voter. To find out how well they are competing for votes. In a presidential election, whom do voters actually choose? What do these people do? Public office holders work on la office. What is negative campaign advertising? Advertising on an, on a, in a political campaign aimed at discrediting why damaging la opposing candidate. This one here, I feel like Chris was sort of flip-flopping between French, Spanish, and English. What are two questions you should ask yourself when evaluating a political commercial? Which individual or group uh, paid for le commercial? What forms of communication are used? If it's anything what Chris is trying to put in, borderline gibberish. What is propaganda? He uses it. Message to influence people's ideas, opinions, and actions. Congratulations, that's the... F uh, okay, I can agree with Chris on that one. Yes, finally. Finally, Chris, as far as I know, gave a correct answer. What are two different techniques of propaganda? Write a brief description of each. Glittering uh, generalities uses vague words or ideas... He misspells ideas that don't really say... And he misspells say as well. Fuck me much. Card stacking. Uses facts that support candidate's argument. JFK assassination. Oh, God. Brief notes on JFK's assassination, including a diagram of the scene. Oh, okay, you know what? Oh, boy. Chris did a diagram of... You know, considering that there were, like, it was on film, the assassination, you would have thought Chris could have just traced uh, the image itself of Kennedy's assassination, but of clearly not. John F. Kennedy assassinated November 22nd, 1963, Dallas, Texas, 12.30pm. JFK is shot twice from the sixth floor of Texas School Book uh, Depository, Pronounced dead at 1 p.m. Parkland. Assassin. Lee Harvey Oswald arrested within two hours. His rifle was found at the scene with only his handprint on it. 
November 24th, Oswald uh, was shot and killed by Jack Ruby Rubinstein. Investigation. Led by Warren Commission and Chief Justice Earl Warren, after 10 months, the 26-volume Warren Report concluded that Oswald was the o only assassin. Was the only assassin, it should read, but there we are. Theories. Single built theory. Magic bull it. One bullet hit both JFK and Governor Connolly. This supports Warren Report. Assassin on Grassy Knoll. Shot JFK in front. Umbrella Man. People posed as FBI agents. Number of shots. Three question mark. And once again, the uh, transcription. Uh, well, we you don't really need a, tra a transcript. We we if you if you know about. I mean, again, even though like I said before, it's not necessarily my area of expertise, but the assassination is something I know quite well. And to be fair, there's not really that much Chris got wrong about it. I mean, he knows what happened and. He knows that there is speculation about whether it was a plot by the FBI or the CIA and stuff like that. There's, 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 it's, it's a mystery that still eludes people to this very day about the nature of Kennedy's assassination and also of Bobby Kennedy's assassination years later. English. English 1999 grade report. Chris is... 1999 English grade report reveals that he received failing grades on all but two items and a 78% for the year, showing that at least one of his markers was competent. Uh, for intro paragraph, he got nothing. First body paragraph, he got nothing. Pride and Prejudice uh, 2, he got nothing. Even though Chris got quite a good for the year for the sonnet test, so. But overall, D. Plus. So, all things considered, and we take into account everything else, not great. Canterbury Tale Essay. An essay on the nun's priest tale from Geoffrey Chaucer's uh, Canterbury Tales, with two drafts a planning slash inventory sheet, and a grade sheet. The rough draft looks to be peer reviewed while the second draft was most likely reviewed by the teacher. The first draft of the essay is just the narrative of the story the essay was supposed to be about, and Chris uses extremely basic punctuation, mainly commas, incorrectly, as well as making up words. Oh, Chris. Please don't ever change. Actually, no, maybe change some for the better, not, you know... The second draft is the same thing minus the uh, fictitious words, but plus numerous tense errors. And with an awfully written conclusion tacked onto the end, Chris earned a 69% grade from a very generous or very stupid marker. And that's how the fox goes overboard with his pride and how his crime didn't go into his favour. I would have been given probably 6% if I'd wrote something like that. Chris's eloquent conclusion in the rough draft, which his teacher didn't even notice, was the conclusion. Well, that's it for this uh, for the essay. What? D no, Chris did not. No, Chris revised conclusion. No, 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 no. Hang on. First of all, d please tell me that... Need a conclusion. Yes, yeah, please tell me Chris did not, like... Please, please tell me he, uh, where, where, where is it? Where is it? Uh, 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 uh and the rooster learned this mistake. Well, that's it for this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Chris, no, you did not. No, Chris, Chris, no, no. Chris, you did not say that. No. Oh my God, no. Chris, what? Oh, I bit my cheek. Chris, you did not say that at the end of an essay. And, well, that's it for this essay. Boom. Chris! Oh, what? I'm... I'm fucking speechless. In fact, you know what? Because... Okay, you know what? Forget it. Let's play teacher for one second. Let's do 
hit, let's go over his rough draft. For once, I'm beginning to realise the sheer dread that uh, some teachers had when they probably read some of my essays. Fuck me. Canterbury essay, rough draft. The cat... Okay, we'll ignore that. The Canterbury Tales gives us an excellent portrait of life in Middle Ages. Off to a great start. The 30 pilgrims on a journey to the shrine of Thomas A. Beckett on the way to Canterbury. The pilgrims have a contest involving storytelling. So each story Pilgrim told was a frame story in the story of Canterbury Tales. I can see where Chris is coming from at least, but no, the, fr- the, the wording is all wrong. It's probably not even true. And at, d- does Chris at any point... I, I'm going to make a prediction that reading through this, Chris does not make any mention of the Tabard Inn. Which was the inn where Chaucer's uh, tra- uh, pilgrims all stopped on their tri- trip to Canterbury. I know that much about the Canterbury Tales. In the Nun's Priest Tale, editor crossed out an underline and wrote Don't Underline in margin by Geoffrey Chaucer, the deadly sin, pride, was committed. Editor wrote, Say something about tra- uh, Chantis, uh, Chanticleer's dream in margin and an arrow pointing to this paragraph. In this tale slash fable, the rooster Ch- Chanticleer expresses too much pride, and it got him into trouble. One day, Chanticleer was sitting on a fence post when, in the bushes nearby, a sneaky sly fox was hiding there. The fox came out and told uh, Chanticleer how his father supposedly crowed magnificently, the way he had his chest out, head back, eyes closed. Then he crowed his great crow. Then Chanticleer's pride rose, so he put his chest out, head back, and closed his eyes. And just before he crowed, the fox pounced and clasped his jaws on the poor, prideful rooster. And that's how Chanticleer's pride got him into trouble. I personally would have wrote uh, in order to uh, in order to reimburse uh, his sense of pride. Chanticleer dutifully accepted uh, the uh, uh, proposal by the fox, and immediately decided to uh, you know uh, puff his chest out, roll his head back, and close his eyes, completely oblivious uh, to the notion that uh, his pride has carried his thoughts away. And it left him vulnerable to those who would take advantage of the fox's vanity. Well, Chanticleer, I should say. Well, the rooster Chanticleer, okay. Something along those lines. There's probably more that goes into that. Also in this tale, the fox also expresses too much pride. I wouldn't really accept that the, the fox uh, expresses cunning as so much to pride as the fox carries uh, Chanticleer in his mouth. Chanticleer flatters the fox by telling him how clever the fox was in capturing Chanticleer. He also mentioned that flattering the chicken and capturing him off guard was pure genius. When the fox opens his mouth to reply profoundly, the chicken jumps out and runs away from him, up the tree. And that's how the fox goes overboard with his pride and how his crime didn't go in his favour. That seems like, I mean... I would be on on par, ladies and gentlemen, to say that Chris is not technically wrong, but it's doesn't it doesn't read as though Chris understood why uh, the fox was proud, or where did any of this pride come from, or what what what, what was the idea of the of this of this tale being uh, dropped? Well, here's the second draft, so maybe things get better. Canterbury essay. Chris drew a star in the margin to the left of each line. The editor crossed out the entire row of stars on the first page. Okay, so he, no, he didn't learn anything. The Canterbury Tales, editor underlined the title for Chris, gives us an excellent portrait of life in the Middle Ages. Editor circled the A in ages, presumably because it should have been capitalised. The 
30 pilgrims are on a journey to the shrine of Thomas A. Beckett on the way to Canterbury. The pilgrims have a contest involving storytelling. So each story that each pilgrim told, Redditor wrote T above told, presumably for tense, was a frame story in the story of Canterbury Tales. In The Nun's Priest Tale by Ch Geoffrey Chaucer, the deadly sin pride was committed. In this tale slash fable, the rooster Chanticleer has a dream in which told uh, was editor circled which told was going to going to happen later in this tale. In his dream, Chanticleer editor wrote one side only at the top of his page. Evidently, this essay was supposed to be single sided. Was attacked by a beast with a blend of yellow and red. The beast tried to seize him in his mouth with a small smout. Editor wrote SP above smout. Then his wife, uh, uh, Pert Pertolote, woke him up as he was groaning and lurching in the real world. But uh, Pertolote proclaimed that he was a coward because he was afraid of his dream. Now, later in the tale, Chanticleer and the fox expresses too much pride, and it got both them into trouble. One day, Chanticleer was sitting on a fence post, then comes the fox. The fox uh, caught Chanticleer by telling him about how his father, probably crowed, editor wrote RV, question mark, in the margin possibly meaning revise. Magnificently, the end, the way he had his chest out, head back and eyes rolled. Just one second. <clears throat> okay, so back once again. Opening his mouth to shout it out, but as he did, the rooster jumped out and he ran up a tree. And that's editor circled T's and wrote, not con contractions in the margin, how pride got uh, Chanticleer and the fox into trouble. Now, editor circled to conclude this essay and struck it out. Chaucer's Canterbury Tales gives us a great picture of life in the Middle Ages in the nun's priest tale, Chanticleer had a dream showed what was going on and was going to happen and that the rooster and the fox's pride got each other into trouble and the rooster and the fox learned from the mistakes they had made. Editor struck out his last sentence as well as circling the T's in that. But let's just put a cherry on top by saying, well, that's it for this essay. And yes, let's, let's, commemorate this moment once again by literally for the third time today doing this because this is still I'm going to reserve this clip for f for future videos by the way because I I love it because it just summarizes just this in this 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 this, this last 90 minutes you stupid ignorant son of a bitch dumb bastard Jesus Christ I've met some dumb bastards in my time but you outdo them all get over there yeah I you, you, you tell up, Gene. Planning sheet transcription. So, um, outside the fact that, well, the can't, this doesn't give us, uh, this doesn't paint a picture of life in the Middle Ages, It and there's no evidence to suggest what exactly the Fox or even uh, Chanticleer even learned from this whole ordeal, and it doesn't, no, it does no, nothing about this gives any sort of, it doesn't suggest about who actually learned anything and what was there to learn anyway uh the planning sheet transcription grade sheet four paragraphs uh complete sentences examples uh, incidents topic sentences cliche chris d was just d d and japan war essay oh yes here it comes a wandering, factually inaccurate essay uh, purported to be about Japan and the United States in World War II, which Chris sar uh, sagaciously uh, describes as a very tragic event with guns, insults, and yuck. Most of the content is directly cited from other works, possibly the internet, several of which uh, are actually about World War I. With what little content Chris actually came up with himself is highly subjective, informally, and terribly written. The final draft begins with this essay is about and frequently racist. The thesis, if it can be so called, is extremely vague. 
There is an outline and two drafts of the essay. What mark he received for it can be only be guessed at. Of note, it is, in, is that despite the essay being for his English class and being corrected on it in the rough draft, Chris wrote parts of the headings in Spanish, fuck, m fuck me, including writing his name as Ricardo on the final draft. So the war was started only because the privacy of the US was invaded. So the US and Japan really wanted to get it on. So, okay, hang on. I've got a, I've got an idea. Okay, let's, um, I know I can't actually put the, the, the music or anything like that, but I'll tell you what, let's just try and, uh, let's see if we can, I can engage my inner Barry White for one second. Well, 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 I can feel it trying. Hey, you, come on. Uh, hang on a minute, no, but, no, that's not Barry White, that's, that's Marvin Gaye who's, frig me. I can feel it try. Okay, you know what? Actually, I'll tell you. What, I'm actually gonna pull up, pull up the lyrics to this because I, I, it's important for me to make this as accurate as I can. Yeah, it is Marvin Gaye. I knew it was as well. Fuck me. Why did Why did I think Barry White was was the one who sang this? Okay, but let's just okay. Let's do Let's do this from the beginning. So. Well, 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 I've been really trying, baby. Trying to hold back this feeling for so long. And if you feel like I feel, baby, then come on. Let's get it on. Yes, Chris somehow seems to suggest um, the, the United States and Japan's uh, involvement in World War Two went on to inspire a song by Marvin Gaye. They, oh, they got it on all right. Good Lord. At near the end of the war, President Woodrow Wilson... Wilson was U.S. President from 19... He was President in 19... He was in... in no, Chris, no, that's... I know, I know, okay, I know Wilson was still U.S. President in 1914, and he was also a member of the KKK, but, did, did, how did Chris, it, how did Chris not know that? I'm pretty, Roosevelt, yeah, Roosevelt was absolutely still, pre, was President during this time as well, so okay, I'm, I'm glad I got that part down. I, I know, I know that much. To withdraw from Shandong, even the president of the U.S. wanted to put an end to this nasty war. Chris, not realizing that the sentence that he quoted begins with "at the end of World War One," <laughs> but the real barbarians were the Japanese people themselves. The U.S. fought the same way. Fuck me. <laughs> But the real barbarians were the Japanese people themselves. The US fought the same way. Fuck me. <laughs> Very confusing plus unclear. Chris's English teacher providing an apt summary of this essay as well as Chris's writing in general. Oh god. <laughs> okay. I want the actual essay. Where is it? Uh... Intro paragraph, appetizer, first body, veggie, to second body, potatoes, rice, pasta, third body, meat, restate, feces, dessert, feces, now well, now well, see how the Japanese people were involved, how the past affected it, and how World War II was... Oh my god. Um Uh You know what if if Chris was in like high school today uh, or even in let's say 40 years from the future and uh, future generations would be inquiring uh, kids to write about how the war in Iraq got got down I can only imagine Chris would probably say something on the lines of, 
uh, all Bush wanted to do was go to the US uh, to uh, mine and buy some oil from the people of the Middle East. But they said no and decided to uh, strike revenge by destroying the Twin Towers. And uh, Osama bin Laden gleefully stating with uh, his uh, fingers in an L position going, You are weak, Mr. Bush. What on a what am I doing with my life? If this this is literally what my life has come to, and I'm not even putting the Gene Wilder clip back on because I think the point's been stated. Although, from what I've observed, not nearly hard enough. On my honour, I, Christian Western Chandler, pledged that this paper reflects my own thoughts. Some of no, that's not true either. Any sources used to support my ideas have been promptly documented. Properly, no. They didn't. And they weren't. English one. This essay is about the Second World War, where the US went against Germany and Japan, and the Russians, and probably the later on, probably, well, no, the Chinese didn't get involved, or even the Koreans, so, no, those... I mean, yes, but there were quite a lot of uh, other key figures, like, you know, fascist Italy, for example, was probably... Um, in America's line of sight in terms of, like, uh, fight against the Axios power and stuff like that. Like all fights, the war did not... <sighs> like all fights, the war did not start big, but... Chris almost forgot to skip a line, but corrected himself. Just a little skirmish between Japanese troops on night maneuvers and Chinese troops guarding the Marco Polo Bridge. Going to war with Japan, P3, so the war was started only because of the privacy invasion for US, but even before that skirmish, what skirmish were you, are you referring to, Chris? You mean Pearl Harbor? Is that what you're referring to? It only has just occurred to me that Chris has not made any mention of, you know, Pearl Harbor or... You, you, no, he hasn't made anything about what these skirmishes were. Where did they take place? Why did they take place? And did Chris even... Oh, forget it. The Japanese and Americans have been glowering each other like boxes from opposite corners of a 5,000 mile ring, waiting for their bout to begin. F terrific. That's... It's terrific. It's Yusik versus Fury. Yeah, Fury was robbed and all that. J Opposite corners of a 5,000 mile ring were about to begin. So US and Japan really wanted to get it on. I hardly, well, considering what Japan would suffer through for years to come, I think they'd be first to say perhaps that was not such a good idea. During the wait for the start of the war, the Japanese were closeted on their remote islands with little contact beyond the sea. I don't know, I think they had plenty of contact uh, with, you know, the Chinese and the Koreans in terms of... Oh, I'm not even wasting my time trying to divulge this utter drivel of an essay. They deemed themselves as a superior race and the rest of the world as barbarians. I don't really... What? War against Japan, but the real barbarians uh, were the Japanese themselves. Actually, I've only just noticed that Chris usually Chris doesn't even but the, these aren't even properly like documented either. Usually, what you do in essays is that you, you you footnote these. That's what you do when you're writing essays like this. But Chris doesn't even do that. So we say war against Japan, but who was it written by? What year did it come out? It says page, yes, but under what line? These sorts of things you have to. Chris doesn't even know how to like reference things either, not even in his own work, in, in his own essays, which is something he can't do in real life anyway, but that's besides the point. Again, the US fought the same way, and when Japan marched into Manchuria in 1931, the US denounced the action and said they would never recognise Japan's conquest. Right then, the US wanted to prove themselves more superior. I mean, to be fair, Herbert Hoover wasn't particularly a, a very erudite president anyway, and, well, 
neither would you neither would you be if you were leading the free world uh, throughout uh, the Wall Street crash and the subsequent Great Depression. As the war went on, both sides saw that it was unwinnable. Wartime in that's no, that's more in reference to uh, uh, America's involvement in Vietnam, not uh, with the Japanese. Wartime in Japan was viewed as sinister. At near the end of the war, President Woodrow Wilson tried to get Japan to withdraw from Shandong, going to war with Japan. Even the President of the US tried to put an end to the nasty war. And yes, I know, say it before and say it again, Wilson was... Was Wilson even still alive uh, during the uh, early 1940s? I don't think so. And so, after the war finally ended, US and Japan came into peace. Well, no, that's... And, and, and people from both sides were happy. Now we saw how the war started and how much Japan was involved. Um... Not not necessarily. Um, let's not forget that uh, one or two comments are, are needed here. Like just just a few small ones about how an atomic bomb was uh, dropped over. What? What? Hang on a minute. Where where was the bomb dropped again? Um, I know the plane. That the plane was called the Enola Gay, where the bomb uh, dropped over. W was it over Nagasaki? Was was it over? Hiroshima, yeah. Chris doesn't make any mention towards the bomb being dropped over Hiroshima. There's no reference whatsoever to uh, probably the millions of people that died during the bombings, let alone uh, why the Japanese viewed uh, the Americans as enemies. Was it down to uh, their, their, their march into Manchuria? Because that would seem, so I think that would be the sort of thing that would concern the Chinese and the Koreans probably a lot more, and probably even the Russians as well. Because the Japan, the Japanese people uh, uh, absolutely trousted a very, very inexperienced and very overly proud uh, militia from the Russians during the, uh, the well, basically the final days of the of the of the Tsar's empire of Nicholas II. I'm getting too involved in this. Let's move on. It's got nothing to do. With Chris's warped perception of the fact that he knows Jack squat about history. <clears throat> and I'm pretty... Well, it's just the same as before. And yes. Best President Essay. A typical brief essay for social studies class in which Chris explains why John F. Kennedy was the best modern president. Both a rough draft and a final draft included. While the teacher corrected the final draft, all the notations on the rough draft are in Chris's handwriting. Both drafts are typed. The marking can only be described as genuous. Chris constantly changes tense incorrectly. All the paragraphs are terse and uninformative. And Chris even manages to misquote the famous line from Kennedy's inaugural address. Chris received a final grade of 43 out of 50, plus an additional 10 points because it was typed. <coughs> Note that the English teacher who uh, gave him this mark made multiple false corrections, crossed out the same mistake the second time it appeared, but not the first time, and did not know how to spell integrity, and yet he still got hired as a teacher. I can see why Chris liked it there so much now. I'm beginning to really f understand this. Who was the best? Well, okay, so this is just the rough draft, but I want to see the, 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 the real one. I want to see the actual rough draft. Um, uh, government rough draft. Okay, I'm, I'm going to assume this is like the best. This is his best draft. Okay, so here we go. Um, who Three qualities identified with support, 30 points. Subject and verb agreement, 10 points, and spelling is worth 10 points. The best president from Franklin Roosevelt to Bill Clinton is, teachers circle this and the word had in two next two paragraphs and wrote constant tense in margin. The tense is actually correct in this case. John F. Ke so, yeah, I, I thought it was as well. So this, this guy had no fucking clue what he was doing. John F. Kennedy, Kennedy is the best because he gave the role of presidency new heights.
Um, that's debatable, I would say. Three good qualities of Kennedy that he had, uh, teacher crossed this out and wrote possessed, more integrity, leadership, and intellect. Kennedy had integrity, teacher circled this and wrote SP, Chris's spelling is not incorrect, when he was president for one thing, he was honest about his qualities for president. He was a Democrat, 42 years old when he ran, he was a congressman and a senator, had a wealthy Catholic family, and he was a hero in World War II. Even though those were his drawbacks... Wait a minute, how is being a hero in... How is... How, 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 how is any of these meant to be drawbacks? I mean... What what is Chris talk? What what do you, what do you mean? Even though though these were his drawbacks, what do you, what do you mean by Chris? So just so what so what's a pro okay? He used them as an advantage in his television debut. Teacher wrote a weak support in margin. Kennedy had leadership when he was a president. When he was he was president. There's no need for the A and. God, I don't really know who needs to tell Chris this, but guess what? When you have one election and you are president, you're meant to be having that level of support by, you know, anyway. It's 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 not exactly as if it was Kennedy who was completely pushed out at sea. His leadership was expressed when he did two things. When he gave his famous speech, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. And when he ended the Cuban Missile Strike by putting the country under quarantine. And, teacher crossed this out, Kennedy had intellect when he was a president. It was obvious to put $9 billion towards space programs, he probably would have known a possible way to put a man on the moon before the money towards it. Teacher wrote, another example please? To sum it up, teacher crossed this out, John F. Kennedy was the best president. He had more integrity, leadership, and intellect. Compared to the other presidents, from Franklin Roosevelt to Bill Clinton, they could not have said a better speech or put the money to a better use. Whatever. Let's let's just keep going. I I am I'm, I'm like. Reading all of this has left me slightly dazed and confused, ladies and gentlemen, because there are parts of this where I'm almost willing to say Chris is not really wrong about these things, but there's they are so grossly uh, simplified and the justifications are not particularly very well divined and versed. This is this is like something maybe a year. Seven or yeah, eight pupil would probably make so like a twelve or a thirteen year old, but Chris was, I, 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 the youngest he's been in this is at least sixteen, and I know you could immediately say Chris, well, he had learning difficulties and stuff like that, but, well, maybe they shouldn't have put him in classes where obviously he was uh, inadequate to to uh, do these tasks because. Well, as it's been pointed out, probably several teachers literally were either bribed by Bob or something like that, or just had no idea, were so terribly underqualified for this that it's it's painful to see. A page in which Chris's classmates wrote positive things about him, presumably as a teacher mandated attempt to bring other, each other warm fuzzies and promote acceptance among the class. Most of his classmates clearly stuck by the adage, if you don't have anything nice to say, give a light, generic compliment instead. The things they wrote suggest that Chris's random access humour was in abundant use by this stage. I like your clothes. Is a very funny and nice person. Okay. Funny. You are a nice person. Nice watch. You're a funny, very funny guy. You're a good friend. You tell great jokes. You tell fun jokes. Student Life Essay a planning sheet and rough draft of an essay about high school students' jobs affect their school performance. Not a problem for Chris, of course. Chris inexplicably drew a star at the beginning of each line. An editor, described uh, below in bold, hopefully appear, but unfortunately probably the teacher, has made numerous false corrections of things that were not correct, as well as making grievous uh, spelling and grammar errors in their written comments. Health concerns may 
they, wow, this guy literally they crossed the entire thing out. This was when Chris was 17 as well. Uh, to conclude this essay, I would recommend for those students who are interested in a job to only work on weekends. Fantastic. Something that, to be honest, anybody else would have said. So, really, Chris doesn't even say anything really, like, new or interesting like this. And to be honest, with how everything is gone, and presumably a lot of these aren't particularly quoted or referenced by any... No, they're not referenced at all to... According to the Man HS Student Work Survey, yeah, the, the, these, these things aren't even, like, referenced correctly either. Uh, Chris suggests, okay, SOL test. Chris suggests in the Standards of Learning, SOL essay, that his high school school's senior class should fund the construction of an indoor swimming pool in the gym as their class gift, exhibiting that he has no notion of how much that would cost. He alludes to gym teachers having wet, wild times with the students in the prospective pool. It's unclear whether this is an attempt at innuendo or that Chris generally didn't realise how it sounded. <laughs> yeah. Um, with the uh, Every year, yeah, the senior graduating class presents a gift for the school. The money for their gift is taken out of the senior fund. Usually each gift is great for future students and the school. My idea for a class gift would have to be an indoor swimming pool built in the gym area. With the addition of the swimming pool, it could do great things for the students and the school and PE classes. Since the students have to wait until next summer to cool off and exercise in a pool, they could keep those legs and arms seaworthy. With the pool in the gym, it would also be a great option for PE classes besides basketball, jogging and weightlifting. The PE teachers could have a wet wild time with the students. And the school would have a swim team and compete with other pool-filled schools. It didn't work. 13 lucky writing tips. This document is perhaps the single most baffling example of Chris's writing currently on record, which is no mean feat. The 13 lucky uh, writing tips are a list of notes Chris took which were most likely suggestions and recommendations duly ignored from a textbook that were read off by a teacher. Directly contradicting the very first item on the list, Chris switches from English to Spanish mid-sentence about a third of the way through the list. The work is dated uh, 2nd of August uh, uh, 1999, most likely referring to... Okay, so... Okay, sorry. It's meant to be 8th of February, using the Spanish date format. Um, Chris used pop culture figures, Pokemon, Sonic, the Powerpuff Girls, to illustrate vocabulary words. Chris's class seems to have wanted Spanish dubs of the Powerpuff Girls in class, so for once he had an excuse for shoving fictional characters into his schoolwork. His Pokemon are revealing, he describes uh, Christian the Chameleon as Medrego, very thin, Ricardo the Raichu as Mon Divietito, very funny, and Cole and Bijo as Mon Freo, very ugly. This appears to be Chris's earliest reference to Pokemon. It had been introduced in North America four months earlier. So... That's that stuff there. And also, where is... You know what? I'm saving that next time. We're, we we need to we need to just cover this. Because this is like... Going on for such a long time. And to be honest, a lot of this is just stuff in Spanish. Which, it is what it is. But... It's clearly something probably Chris was probably more apt at doing. And... Mock job interviewing chemistry and getting acquainted. A bingo-like icebreaker activity for the students of the classes to want to get to know each other, exchanging personal trivia. Chris refused to talk to any male students and left the grid incomplete, including the square was used by supposed to fill in himself. Good lord, so Chris just... Chris's noviophobia was such uh, kicking in and stuff like that that, well, it, it was... They, they should have saw the signs coming a long time ago. Um... Safety worksheets. Safety in the kitchen worksheet. <laughs> a door worksheet designed to educate children about kitchen safety. Uh, the worksheet evidently had little effect on Chris since he went on to slip on cat shit and cause his house to burn down. 
what should you do uh, uh, if you open a cabinet door or dry or draw a Y? Close them, low shelves. I mean, at this point, yes, that's, to be honest, that is that is literally just about it. I'm just putting it out there right now because I think we've just about covered the lot. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so yes, we have just about finished that. that this has been, so far, the single longest article of Christory I've ever had to cover, I think at this point. And it concerned, as far as we know, every single leaked article in terms of Chris's schoolwork that was recovered from the 2014 house fire. Oh god, I've been I've been here for like nearly two and a half hours and I am like completely stunned. I'm stunned and baffled uh, 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 because of the knowledge that well if this is this is just the things that have been found by the way. G g goodness those imagine about uh what Chris was like in math or what is what other things he would have studied like geography or stuff like that. We already know he his history is all sorts of backwards and his uh ability to entice us with an an essay about Canterbury's Tales is would 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 make any like uh, English uh, teacher literally vomit but how on earth like 13 lucky writing tips is something I have to like really really have to like stab at because well for those who don't know right I'll, I'll explain that next time but in the meantime thank you all of you who've got this far and stuck with me and I cannot wait to see all of you guys again in the next video take care and bye bye for now